Hey, thanks for joining for yoga class today. Today's sequence is called Yoga for a Deep Sleep. Now the reason why I wanted to share this sequence with you today is because sleep is so important. It's something that we need for a third of our day and a lot of us aren't getting as much sleep as we need to in order to function at an optimal level. Um, when we heal is when we sleep. So if we're not getting enough sleep, it's difficult to have enough of a healing process from current or past events that might have been traumatic for us. And all of us can really benefit from some healing. A lot of uh, reasons contribute to <clears throat> not being able to sleep enough or not being able to get to a state of a deeper sleep. Some of those things can be anxiety, insomnia, having a lot of responsibilities and trying to do a lot of things when we just don't really have enough time to do all the things on our list or all the things that get thrown at us. So I would like to just offer you this sequence to help you learn some postures that are beneficial for relaxation and promote a deeper sleep for you. We are gonna start in Tadasana or Mountain Pose. So go ahead and come onto your feet. And as you come onto your feet, position your feet hip distance. So when you look down to your feet, there's enough space for another foot of yours to fit between your two feet. And as we come into our Tadasana pose, let's just relax those shoulders away from the ears because we do have a tendency to hold the shoulders up and we really wanna let the shoulders melt down away from the ears. So to let this happen, because sometimes we don't even know that we're holding that tension, we'll inhale, lift the shoulders up to the ears, exhale, take the shoulders back and down, palms are facing forward. Let's do that two more times. Movement is following the breath. One more time, inhale, shrug the shoulders up. Exhale, take the shoulders back and down. Now, set the shoulders away from the ears. Relax. Bring your gaze inward by closing your eyes. And as you close your eyes, feel the foundation of your feet standing on the mat. If you have a tendency to lock out your knees like I do, take a little micro bend in the knees, just softening the knees. And then think about pulling the belly button towards the spine, feeling the tailbone lower. Now, notice your breath. The next inhale, breathe in all the way to the top of the breath. And when you're ready to take an exhalation, slowly release. Let's try that again. Inhale all the way to the top of the breath. Exhale, slow release. Continuing to breathe in this way. Inhale all the way to the top of the breath, all the way until you can't take in any more air. Exhale, let it go. Continue, inhale deeply. Exhale completely. Big, full inhalation. Next time you take an exhalation, open the mouth, let it go, sigh of relief. We'll take a few more rounds. Now with each exhale, sigh of relief. As you continue to breathe in this way, know that by lengthening the breath and taking time to breathe with intention is allowing you to calm your own nervous system, to down-regulate, releasing anxiety, reducing stress, and promoting that relaxation that we need to enter a deep sleep. Let's take one more round of breath. Exhale, let go. Now, flutter the eyes open, come back into the space, bringing your feet to the top of the mat. We're now gonna transition from Tadasana, from mountain pose into a standing forward fold. As you inhale, reach the arms up, fingertips towards the sky. And as you exhale, hinge the hips. A 
allow yourself to fold forward. Now, as you come into the forward fold, if you notice that your hamstrings are tight, I invite you to bend your knees. If you want to play around with opening the hamstrings, as you inhale, you might bend the knees deeply. And as you exhale, you might straighten the legs. Inhale, bend. Exhale, straighten. Legs don't have to go all the way straight. Protect your body. Notice what you need. We're just warming up, so no need to push yourself too much at this point. Just feeling into the body and noticing where it is right now. We'll take a couple more knee bends. And then eventually we'll bring our legs to stillness. Now taking the hands to opposite elbows, framing the head with the arms. Gently swaying from side to side. I find that this is a really great way to feel into the hips. And also, you're getting more traction for your spine. So if you decide to not sway from side to side and just stay center, you let the spine decompress. Maybe you play around with straightening the legs. Just feeling into this standing forward fold. This is an inversion. Let's take another round of breath here, and then we will move on, transitioning to the next pose. Release the elbows. Bring your hands to connect to the mat. Now, if you have um, issues connecting your hands, you might bend your knees to make that connection. From here, we're going to step the right foot way back, and then the left foot way back, and then we'll lift our hips coming into our downward facing dog. Now, as you set up for your downward facing dog, make sure the fingers are spread wide. Think about positioning the ears between the biceps and send the chest towards the thighs. Here you can bend one knee as the opposite leg stays straight. Getting a deeper stretch in the leg, traveling up into the hip, and then trying that on the other side. Feeling into the body and taking this time to get to know your body better. Where you're holding tightness. And when you find that space, breathing into it, allowing time to release the congestion. In your down dog, you might even sway your hips from side to side. And then find center. Take two more rounds of breath. On your next inhale breath, shift forward towards plank position, but soften the knees. Let the knees connect to the mat. Now, from here, we're coming into a kneeling position, setting up for our neutral tabletop. Checking your alignment. Make sure that your wrists are under your shoulders and that your knees are under your hips. Now, uncurl your toes. As you inhale, let your belly lower towards the mat. And as you exhale, lift your back, moving through extension and flexion of the spine, bringing movement to the back space. Noticing how it feels to move your body in this way. And we'll take one more round. and then find our way back to a neutral tabletop position. Now from here, we are gonna move into a lizard pose. So I do recommend that you take your hands, one hand placement forward. You'll see why as we come into it. So we're gonna start on the right side. We're gonna lift that right knee, step the right foot outside of the right hand. Now, we want the right knee tracking above the right ankle. Hands are positioned in line with the right foot. If your knee is coming past your toes, then you're going to shimmy your foot forward. Now we've got lots of options in our lizard pose. We can take the option to splay the right knee out away from the body, or we can hug the knee in. 
We can also keep the palms on the mat, or we can lower onto the forearms, positioning the elbows in line with the arch of the right foot. If your hands are to the mat and your arms are straight, you might rock the hips from side to side, just feeling into this area of the body. Just giving yourself time to let the opening happen at the hips. For more activation, you could curl your back toes and come off of your back knee. Now, if you try this and that doesn't feel really good, then know that you can come back down onto your knee. So it's up to you. And let's just take one more round of breath. Now from here, switching it up, taking it to the other side, let's slide that right foot back. Bring the right knee in line with the left. Lift the left knee, step the left foot outside of the left hand. Now setting up on this side, remembering your option. You might let that left knee splay out, external rotation for the hip. Or you might hug the knee in towards the shoulder. You might lower down onto your forearms, positioning elbows in line with the arch of the left foot. Or you might rock the hips gently from side to side, just a little micro movement. And if you want to go even deeper, you can curl those back toes, lift off the knee. Maybe trying all these different options and seeing which one your body is responding to best. Now remember, we don't want to cause pain or discomfort. We do want to feel a stretch. Let's take a couple more rounds of breath. Now, if your knee is lifted, go ahead and lower it down. If your forearms are on the mat, bring the palms to press the mat. And then from here, we're gonna slide that left foot back. Now, as we bring the, both the knees back, walk your hands towards your body, just send your feet out to one side. Now, we're changing the station of our body from kneeling to seated. So we want to bring our legs forward, and we're going to bring our legs together. So as you bring your legs together, look and see your feet will be together. Starting off, before we do anything else, let's take our hands outside of our hips. Now, as you inhale, point your toes, get a nice deep stretch at the tops of your feet. And then exhale, flex. Inhale, point. On your exhalation, flex. Feel into the calf muscles. And again, we'll take another round. Pointing and flexing. Now from here, we are gonna move into a seated forward fold. So with your hands outside of your hips, as you inhale, sweep the arms up, fingertips towards the sky. And then exhale, hinge the hips. Reach forward. Now, as you reach forward, do this slowly. If your low back is tight, you might feel sensation in this area. So, your arms can rest outside of your legs. You might have the urge to reach, grab, and pull at your feet. If you can reach your feet, awesome. Then you can do that but I wanna make sure that you're not pulling or straining. So let's talk about a couple different options here. For today's class, I've got a blanket and two blocks. The blocks can come in handy with this pose because if you set the blocks outside of your legs, you have a really nice place for your forearms to rest. So here we're just taking a passive stretch this means we're able to relax as we stretch the back of the body without pulling, reaching, grabbing, and forcing the pose. So this is one option. If you're really flexible though, and you have no problem grabbing your feet and you need to be challenged to go deeper, then the block can come to your feet. And then instead of holding onto your feet, you can hold onto the block with each exhale, fold a little deeper. 
Now, the more you fold, the deeper you're going to feel the stretch in your back, finding flexion for the spine. Let's take two more rounds of breath. On the next inhale, we will lift the head. Release the prop and slowly roll back up to our straight spine. And as we come into the straight spine, we want to think about the crown of the head reaching up towards the sky. And as the crown of the head is rising up, we want to think about rooting down in the seat. Now from here, we'll take a seated side bend so that we can get into the obliques, we can get into the intercostal muscles between the ribs, feeling into the lats as well. Side body is known as a part of the body that is stretched the least. And so we want to give ourselves time to release that tightness from this area. You can decide if you want to keep your legs straight. For me, I prefer to bend my knees. Just take the option that is helping you feel a little more grounded. You could also come into a kneeling position by having your shins and the tops of your feet be the foundation. Now, once you feel really stable in your seat, on an inhale breath, sweep the arms up, fingertips towards the sky. As you exhale, lower your right hand down. Now, look to make sure that your hand is in line with your hip. You don't want it forward, and you don't want it back. You want it in line with the hip. Next inhale, reach the left fingers up, and then exhale, fold over to the right. Now, we want both hips to stay grounded. We want the bicep above the ear. Now, reach through the fingers. Feel a nice deep stretch from the left hip to the left fingers. Reach, reach, reach. On the next inhalation, we'll lift both arms up. Exhale. Now lower that left hand down, left hand in line with the left hip. Checking, looking over, making sure that you've set it up. And then reaching the right fingers up towards the sky. As you exhale, move over to the left. Now positioning the right bicep above the right ear. Feels so good to stretch in this area. Make sure both hips are grounded. Reach, reach, reach. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Now we're going to take it one more time on each side. Stay as you are. I'm just going to swivel my body around so that you can see from a different angle. So we're going to lower down from starting from the first side, reach the fingers up and then exhale, fold over. Notice that I have both of my hips grounded. You want to keep your seat down, reach. You might look up. If that hurts your neck, you might rotate your face to look down. Now using your energy on your next inhale breath, lift the arms up, reach the fingertips towards the sky. Exhale, set it up other side. Reaching the fingers up and then folding over. Nice deep stretch. Taking care of your body, releasing tension to allow your body to relax, to get into that space of receiving a deeper sleep. Inhale, arms rise up. Exhale, now go ahead and take the hands down. Staying as you are, I'm just gonna swivel around. And now we're gonna move on to a kneeling posture from our seat. So we're gonna come into child's pose so that we can feel the stretch in the hips and in the back. Reach your hands forward. Come on to hands and knees. Option to keep the knees open, the width of the mat, big toes together, send your hips down to your heels, extend your arms forward, reaching your fingertips towards the top of the mat, and then lowering your forehead to the mat. Now, if your forehead does not meet the mat, you're welcome to position a blanket or a block underneath your forehead to make that connection. You'll feel the hips opening. You might even feel a stretch at the inner thighs. If you rather focus on flexion for the spine and feeling into the low back, then you can lift out just enough to bring the knees together, feet together, 
Remember, send the hips down to the heels. This time, the arms are going to be by the sides, forehead to the mat, rounding the spine, creating space in the back area. Now, if your hips don't make it down to your heels, don't worry. You can use the help of a prop. Props are awesome. I highly recommend them. You could place a blanket between your heels and your hips to close off any open space. Now, by bringing your forehead down to the mat and your arms by your sides, you're able to relax your shoulders. Wherever you are, take a few more rounds of breath. With each exhalation, allow yourself to surrender to the pose, softening, sinking down to the mat. Child's pose is an awesome posture to promote sleep. Anytime we struggle with insomnia or anxiety, this is a go-to posture because it helps us to calm the nervous system. And I find that this one is really beneficial to do for three to five minutes. So this is one that you can take for a longer amount of time. You're welcome to pause the video here if you'd like to take it for several minutes. Or you can remember the shape of it and come into it before bedtime. Maybe even taking this pose while you're in your bed before you lay down for a good night's sleep. Continuing our class sequence on the next inhalation, lift your head, peeling it off the mat and slowly rotate crown of the head up towards the sky, coming into a straight spine. Give yourself a moment to take a full round of breath here. Inhale through the nostrils. Exhale, open the mouth, letting go. That feels so good. Maybe you take that a couple more times. One more. Big sigh of relief. Feeling good about moving your body in this way. Finding yourself more towards relaxation. Finding that better sleep. We still do have a few more postures. So the next one we're gonna come into is called Sleeping Swan. I recommend having a folded up blanket or a block close by to support you if you need to. And I'll demonstrate why in just a moment. We're gonna start this one from a kneeling position, just like we were doing before with our back movement. Coming into one side at a time, go ahead and slide your right knee behind your right wrist. Now, I like to curl my left toes, lift the knee, send it back, and then uncurl the toes. You're gonna to wanna to look past your left shoulder. Make sure your left leg is straight behind you, including your foot. Now, in our sleeping swan, we're gonna walk the hands forward. I recommend opening the elbows, stacking one hand on top of the other, making a pillow for your forehead. Now, I've done this posture many, many times, so I know how to square my hips, but if you find that there's a lot of space underneath your right hip, then this is a great opportunity to use the prop. It could be a block or it could be a blanket. So that prop is gonna go right underneath the glute and that's gonna hold you up so you don't have the space there. Also, it's gonna feel really cushiony and supportive. Now you don't have to worry about leaning over, or falling over, or stretching too much. You've got that support underneath the hip bringing the floor up to you. From here, all we need to do is sink down with each exhalation breath. Allow deep stretching in the hip area. Stay here if this is working for you. If you have got knee issues, I wanna show you a different variation. So again, if that's not hurting you, stay where you are. If it's too much pressure on your knee, then you can take the reclined option, which would be to have your right ankle to your left thigh, 
right hand reaches between the legs, left arm comes around, fingers interlace, and now we pull the thigh, still feeling the stretch in the same area, but now without pressure on the knees. So you decide which variation is best for your body today. Take a couple, few more rounds of breath before we move into the other side. Now on our next inhale, we'll gently lift our head gaze forward. Press your hands to the mat. Now we're gonna lift that right knee. So I like to come into a down dog position straightening the right leg, taking a deep bend in the left knee. For me, I feel a deep stretch going up into the hip. And this is how I like to release out of this pose. Try it, feel it in your body, see what you think. Then bend both knees, gently lower the knees down to the mat. Coming into the other side, sliding the left knee behind the left wrist, setting up for our sleeping swan. Curling the back toes, sliding the knee back, and then uncurling. Looking past the shoulder, making sure the leg is straight, including the foot. Now remember, you can use your prop underneath your left hip if you need to. It is very, very possible that one side might feel totally different than the other side. That's normal. We use our bodies in a very asymmetrical way. So you might need different propping for this side, and that's okay. Walk the hands forward, open the elbows out, stack the hands for your forehead, lower the forehead down. Remember to square the hips. Remember if you've got some knee issues or this posture just isn't really feeling great in your body, you can come into the reclined option to get there. You know, lift the head, straighten the arms, roll to the left hip. Bring that right foot forward, and as you come onto your back, you're going to bring your left ankle to your right thigh. Reach your left hand between your legs, right hand around the outside, fingers interlace. Now with control, pulling the thigh towards the body, feeling a stretch in the left hip, but not feeling any pressure in the knees. So just a different variation if you need to. Otherwise, you can come into our original shape. And another thing you can do to support yourself if your hips are tight is you can bring your front heel closer to the opposite hip. If you're more open in the hips, you can make your shin parallel to the top of the mat. So just find what is helping you. We've got just a couple more breaths. Inhale and exhale deeply, feeling into the pose. Feeling so much gratitude for having the tools to be able to find these resources to help us find ways to get deeper sleep, serve ourselves, and focus on self-care. Remembering that sleep is so important. It is a necessity that we need. It's something that we can't negotiate. And we'll slowly start to come out first by just gently lifting the forehead and then pressing palms to the mat, straightening the arms. Now, if you did on the other side, I recommend that you curl the back toes, lift the hips, step that left foot back, straighten the left leg, Bend the right knee. Take a couple rounds of breath here. Remember to send the chest towards the thigh. Feel into the left leg going all the way into the hip. Now bend both knees. Gently lower the knees down. And just take a moment to pause. We're going to transition into the next posture, which is going to be legs up the wall. So for this one, I recommend that you find a wall space close to you. I've got my mat pretty close, but there's a little bit of space on the floor. So I'm going to show you what you can do for a little more cushion. If you'd like, you might not need it, especially if you're practicing on carpet. 
But if you're on a hard floor surface, it'll feel more comfortable for you to take a blanket and you're gonna position the blanket so that it's underneath your tailbone. So I'll go ahead and put the blanket right up against the wall because my legs are gonna go up this wall, okay? You don't need a lot of space, just enough space for your glutes and your legs to go up the wall. So I recommend bringing one hip up against the wall and then from here, you're gonna lift your legs up and then rotate. So use your arms, come onto your forearms, bring the legs up the wall, shimmy your tailbone as close as you can, and then just let the legs relax. Here we can let the arms relax, opening the arms out to your sides. Got a neutral spine and this blanket feels really cushiony underneath my tailbone. You certainly don't want to feel bone on the hard surface. So give yourself cushion if you have the prop to do that. It doesn't have to be a blanket. It could be a pillow. Now just let your entire body relax. We're in a gentle inversion. This is also a really great option for Shavasana. If you prefer, if you've got low back issues, this might be one that you like better than having your legs grounded once you're ready to come into your posture of relaxation. And just allow yourself to enjoy a few more rounds of breath giving yourself the intention of melting down with each exhalation, completely softening, and finding this neutral spine. Here we'll start to transition out before we come into our next pose. I just want to show you another option that you can take instead of sleeping swan or instead of holding your legs as we did, you can use the wall to assist you in this reclined figure four. You just want to make sure that the tailbone is not lifted. So if you do have a wall space in your home, this might be a nice option for you instead of sleeping swan if you don't want to pull and activate with the arms. This one feels amazing for the hips. Moving on with our sequence, we're just going to roll out to one side. Come on to your seat. So you want to bring your body back onto the mat. As you bring your body onto the mat, make sure there are no props on the mat. We're coming into plow pose, halasana, nice deep stretch for the back area. If you are someone that carries a lot of stress or tension in the upper back, then you're going to love this deep stretch. It's an opportunity to let that tension go to really provide that relaxation so that you can chill. So we'll start off with our back on the mat. And then from here, I like to take my right palm under my right glute, left palm under my left glute. Lift the feet up, bring the feet together. As you inhale, press the feet up, roll off the back, bring your legs overhead. Let your hands support your low back. Now, really important, avoid the urge of looking from side to side. You wanna protect your neck. Your toes might tap the ground behind you. Now, you wanna make sure that you're not feeling pressure in your neck. So if you feel weight in your neck, then back out a little bit until you feel the weight in your shoulders and upper back. If you feel really comfortable, you might let your hands go from your low back and bring your hands down to the mat. If you feel wobbly, then certainly support your low back. And if you want to go even deeper, you can bend your knees, bring your knees outside of your ears, and then take your arms to rest at the back of the legs.
to come out safely and carefully, I recommend bending the knees. Take your peace fingers, your index and middle finger to hook onto your big toes. And this is going to allow you to slowly roll out bone by bone all the way until your tailbone meets the mat. Here you might take an optional happy baby if you'd like, making sure to position your feet, soles of the feet towards the ceiling. So it looks like your feet are walking on the ceiling. Now, if you're holding onto your big toes or the pinky edges of your feet and your tailbone lifts, then take your hands to your ankles. Keep that tailbone down. If your hands are at your ankles and your tailbone is still lifted, no problem. Take your hands to the back of your knees. Knees are wide. You might even draw circles with your big toes for ankle mobility and then circle around opposite direction. Bring the feet to stillness. Now this next posture that we're going to come into before our posture of relaxation is going to be from a reclined position. I'm going to roll up because I want to show you a more supported option if you want to take it. You don't have to, but I'm going to set it up just in case. So instead of taking the block, which I do often, I'm going to bring the blanket down instead and I'm going to set it up in a way that the blanket is going to be underneath uh, my upper back. So the blanket can be for your entire back, which would look like this. Or if you want a chest opener, then you can fold the blanket again. And now the blanket is going to go underneath the shoulder blades. At the same time that we support the chest, we're also going to incorporate our blocks. Soles of the feet come together. This is our Supta Baddha Konasana. Now I'm going to slide the blocks underneath my thighs so that my legs aren't having to hold themselves up. My legs can simply relax. I'm going to open up the hips with external rotation, little stretch for the inner thighs, and then I can open my arms out to the sides, now feeling a nice stretch in the shoulders, gentle opening for the chest, making sure that your head is on the ground rather than on the blanket. The blanket is supporting lifting the chest. And remember, it doesn't have to be a blanket. It can be a pillow or a block. And all you have to do here is just breathe. When we allow the heart to open, we cultivate love and compassion. It's so much easier to go to sleep at night with a grateful heart, promoting feelings of warm heartedness and well being. Let's take another full round of breath here. Let go as you exhale. Now we are going to move into our corpse pose, Shavasana, our posture of relaxation. If you like the way that you're set up, you can stay here. Or you can come into more of a traditional Shavasana shape, removing props from underneath and bringing your body down. I recommend bringing the heels to the corners of the mat and bringing arms by your side. So there's a space between the feet, space of the armpits. From here, you're going to want to tuck your chin towards your chest, lengthening the back of the neck. And then closing the eyes, bringing the gaze inward. However, you decide to set yourself up for relaxation. Allow yourself to find the posture that is most comfortable for you. This is our time to integrate the work that we've done in our practice. Our time to just be present with ourselves, find gratitude for the stillness, this time before we transition into the rest of our day, the rest of our evening. If it is time for you to go to bed, 
I would take Shavasana in the bed and just let yourself drift off into a peaceful night's sleep. Continue to breathe and stay in your posture of Shavasana. We're going to take another minute and a half or so here together before we close our practice today. And as you deepen the breath and settle into this pose, feel so much gratitude for yourself for giving yourself this time to invite movement in to promote deep sleep. In this time, focus on deep, rhythmic breathing, bringing all of your awareness to your breath. Simply thinking about your surroundings and opening the body, welcoming the natural energy of the world. In this time, you can decide if you'd like to stay in Shavasana. We will close our practice here together today. Allow yourself to stay in this posture of relaxation. Thank you so much for trying this practice, for being open to trying movement to serve yourself and your needs. It is my deepest honor to be able to guide you in this beautiful practice. The light in me sees, honors, and recognizes the light within you. Namaste.